Whether you're a beginner or a pro, you're gonna learn something from this video because we cover five little known tips about how to become a pro user in Photo Room. Let's jump in. Kicking off with image guidance. Imagine this is your picture, and this is an aesthetic that you love, but you can't replicate it at home. Well, with image guidance, that's no longer a problem. Let me show you how to use it. Here, I have a reference picture of my headphones to look like this, with the gradient, with some black, with a little reflection. I have like some Bose headphones, and I'm just dragging and dropping it onto the photo room screen. I'm gonna resize it so it looks in the same format. And then I'm gonna to go to the AI backgrounds on the left here. It's gonna automatically give you the AI backgrounds, which can look really great in most instances, but here we really wanna copy a style. So you're gonna click Create Backgrounds, and you're gonna click Image, and then you're gonna drag and drop the reference. And after you've done that, you'll see that it's loading in the top left corner here, and it's giving us a very similar image to the original one. So you can see that it got the reflection below, it has the gradient in the center, like if you had to do this on Photoshop, it might take you like 20 minutes. You've just done it in 10 seconds if you copy this. And that's image guidance. So basically image guidance is a tool that if you wanna recreate from inspiration you've seen. The next one is the depth effect. Now this one is really cool and it involves several layers, but I'll show you what I mean. One thing that you might notice on movie poster or magazine covers is that they always add the text behind the character. It's a cool design trick to make sure the main subject catch your eye first and to maintain clarity and visual elements. Well, let me show you how you can do it with photo room in two minutes. Here's a picture of me being a superhero type picture. And we're going to duplicate this and then we're gonna edit the cutout and we're gonna have no cutouts. And so basically what I'm doing here, and I'm gonna adjust the opacity so that we could see the one behind me as well. And then you're just gonna line it up perfectly. So here I have it perfectly lined up, bring back the opacity and then add text. And then you can go to the layers section where you can go back. And now you can see the text is actually behind me in this cool way where you, my head is kind of hiding the text. We're gonna make this into, into something pretty cool actually. This gives your photos some extra depth and little bit of style. Moving on, we have AI shadows. So a cool way that if you Look on Amazon. If you look at water bottles here, you'll see that a lot of these have these shadows right now that they not only look good, but they're not only obviously on a white background, which is required by Amazon and eBay, but they have these little shadows, which I think it's used by sellers to make their listing better than the other sellers and increase their conversion rate. So the Stanley mug has this really hard shadow. This has a soft shadow. This one has a reflective shadow. So they have a shadow plus they're reflecting it. And I'm gonna show you how you can do this without paying a designer or someone on Fiverr. You can literally do it in a couple seconds. So we can actually improve this guy's design. So this guy obviously was too cheap to pay a designer to add the shadows, but we're gonna do it for him for free. So we're gonna resize this into a square and without doing anything, we can click on AI shadows at the bottom here. We can click soft. And now we're gonna improve his Amazon listing. So here you can see we've added a a uh, hard, a soft shadow, a hard shadow, and a floating shadow. So I actually prefer the hard shadow. And then we can also just add a reflection here, remove the opacity, uh, change the angle, and move it a tiny bit. And then we're gonna change it to a soft shadow and so here we have both the reflection or the soft shadow, which is great for Amazon. Another tip that I have is that you can resize the image for instant backgrounds. So the default padding that it gives you is not set in stone. On both the mobile app and the desktop app, that can be resized for you to better place it and to make it come alive. Here's a candle with uh, very little padding. And you can see the problem with this is when we use AI backgrounds, the first option here is you can't really see the surroundings and it's almost too tight. It's like a group photo, but like your arm is a bit cut off. Like you want to have more spacing so that it's comfortable to breathe. So right now you can just click on the object and resize it and immediately you're going to see that there's a lot more uh, space going on. It's going to look weird, but don't worry because in, you can 
click here to refresh in the top left corner there and immediately it's going to refresh with more options and you can do this infinitely. You see now it's a much more cinematic look because you can really take in the background, take in the aesthetic of it. Whereas before it was so zoomed in that you couldn't really see how nice uh, the environment that instant backgrounds can make. So it's something that I really encourage people to do is not just use the default padding, but to play around with the size and also the positioning as well, because uh, if you follow the rule of thirds, you might want it not in the center, but on the, uh, especially if we do a YouTube cover style and you want it to be in the side, we can create something that looks a bit better. So if we do the beach, I mean, this one looks really good, or we also have the beach view. So here we have tropical. So here we just made a really nice cover that I'm sure will make you want to plan a trip to the Bahamas. Great, and now our last tip to close off is instant backgrounds with two pictures. We're gonna have our hand cream and we're also pasting in. So here, let's say you wanna do a versus. It's like, this is the competition and this is us and we're way better. You can automatically use two subjects and it'll find a way to make it work. Uh, so here you can see it's done it and now we're let's resize it for the YouTube cover. Let's make both of these smaller. So we're gonna make this here, we're gonna put this here. And we're gonna to try to create one of those cool versus shots that can really make this work. Here you have this versus shot that kind of works. And if you add an outline to it, to make it a bit more cartoony, I think you've got something that kind of works for all intents and purposes. And here you can easily do a comparison for your marketing when you want to compare yourself to your competitors, which is very useful. You can use Photo Room to do that. We'll do one more example just so I can show you. Okay, I'm going to do myself and my brother's dog. And we're going to do the YouTube cover. That's me. We're going to add my dog. We're going to flip. Great, and now we're gonna make myself bigger and the dog a bit smaller. And here, even though we have two different objects here, we can still make this work. So now it looks like we're at the beach, even though I'm wearing socks, which doesn't make that much sense. But you can see that this kind of works where the dog and myself are at the beach and it looks plausible. And honestly, it looks pretty good. <laughs> it looks pretty good. So there, that's the me, my dog and myself on the beach and we even added the depth effect and you've got the natural waves. All of these are really nice hacks for you to become a pro photo room user and to really get the most out of it, to supercharge your business, get any asset that you need and just be a pro so you can save so much time. So thank you so much for watching. Make sure to check out our other videos here. If you like this content, make sure to hit that subscribe button. See y'all on the next one.